Welcome back to Nana's Kitchen here at the SCAT studio in lovely Union Square. Another episode of Somerville, the good old days. Today we're going to talk about, uh, I don't know if you call it the sound of Somerville, or we're going to talk about music in the good old days. I got, I got a great cast here. I got Patrick O'Neill, who grew up in, uh, where are you from? Davis Square. Davis Square. Nice. And uh, Jimmy Del Ponte, which I heard. Same street. Same street. <laughs> Still. Yeah, we had a big varied cast. In Since this, the 60s. Yeah. Old buddies. Yeah, yeah, same street. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, you're well known around the city of Somerville. You yes, do, uh, I'm a convicted felon. Yeah. <laughs> you do. So everybody knows me. You All do. the post offices. If, I, have I, I, if you're not DJing a road race, I see you doing the Sunsetters. The, yeah, I'm lucky. The I'm, Moonlighters you do. Moonlighters are the senior chorus, and the Sunsetters are the kids that sing out in the street and nice. some at theater camp and uh, a bunch of stuff. You yeah, I'm lucky. I work. Joe's Joe's taking good care of me, and I take care of him. So Beautiful. Good man. Dang, I'm very lucky. So when well, you guys were kids in some of the, and obviously uh, musicians from way back, Can you tell me some of your first memories, Patrick, of uh, music in some of them. Well, in some of them, when, when I was a kid, the big artist was uh, Boris there. Bobby Boris. Boris in uh, yeah, Boom Boom Cannon. Yeah, yeah Freddie <laughs> Cannon from uh, Chelsea, right? Uh, East Boston somewhere. Yeah, wasn't he from Revere? Revere? Did Close enough. Recorded at Fleetwood. So oh, yeah, Studios. Fleetwood Studios, yeah. <laughs> did you go see them, or did you just yeah. they, were, they were just Yeah, around? back in the day. Did, <laughs> did he live in this neighborhood? I mean, what, what, Bobby where, Pickett, where, where yeah, he live? lived up on uh, Heath Street, I think yeah, it was. Went to some high school. Went to oh, some yeah. They had a, they threw him out of the school, didn't they? Because the girls kept chasing him around the, the corridors or something. <laughs> I don't know. So, that was the rumor. <laughs> that sounds We both, didn't we that both. happened to you, too, Jimmy? You got a chance to chase the high school? The you know what? The women who chased me were the ones I should have stayed with. Yeah, uh, chasing me, all the I, sense. I, I don't know, like, I blew some good opportunities. Yeah. How about so, your first musical my, memories? Well, I'll tell you, well, um, when the Beatles came out, we went nuts. I wanted to be Paul McCartney. I, I started tr having my hair like his and got the guitar for Christmas. Yeah, it still looks like his. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look, you got hair at all. Um, so, and then believe it or not, Patrick was a couple years old. He's still a couple years older than me. Than me. And he had and a band. Race. He had a band. No, he had a band. And, um, was the PJ5, because his name's Patrick J. O'Neill. It was the PJ5, and, and uh, I was like, Pat has a band, Pat has a band, and I wanted to have a band, so I started a band, he had a band. And uh, he actually- garages? No, but he, to, no, he played, used to practice in your garage. Yeah. I used to listen outside, but then they got gigs down at um, St. Clements, St. Clements like High School. Dances right? and stuff? Yeah, and I used to go out and listen to him, oh, nice. listen to his band outside, and then little, you know, after a while, I had my own bands that were playing. But the what was your first band? My, my first band was the Mini Squirts. Oh, God, I remember the that. The Mini Squirts. Um, <laughs> well, with, with Charlie Vino, Eddie Brackett, Dave Testa. And, the um, kid. Yeah, yeah, and um, that was, I thought it was the, one of the, the most ingenious things I ever thought of, the Mini Squirts, because Mini Squirts were out. We were these little kids, and I remember working at a bar in Boston and drinking Coca-Cola and tasting the booze. It was like the first taste of booze. But uh, we played. Uh, All yeah, so we played. There, right? But but he yeah. But his bands played. Uh, you, you, what was your band? Uh, et cetera. Et cetera. Right. Et etc. They played at St. Clements and they were they were good. They were good. And then, and then you know I guess got inspired. And then my next band was um, Shadow Facts. Then Shadow Facts turned into the Tools. And I left the stinking record in the car. Oh, oh man, we should have got that. Yeah. I'll give. It, I'll bring it in. And they could take a picture of. Did it. you guys so ever play in a band together? Put, flash the, yes, flash the picture right now. Yes, I love them. The premieres was the first the one. The premieres. It was 1974. That was a great Can't band. Was Oldies. Where, where, where were your gigs? Did, did you ever play the gigs? The Embassy Lounge. Somewhere? Yeah, the Embassy Lounge. It's it was the house China, band. China Delight. <laughs> the house oh, band. China's right here in yeah, it used to be the Yeah, it used to be the Embassy Lounge. So Pat and I were the rockers, and then we had two guys that used to dress like greasers. We used to do 50s and 60s, and then we'd do like, uh, I'm in love with the girl I'm talking about. We used to do, we'd do, we'd do, the, we'd do the modern songs, and they'd do the oldies. Nice. Those are great guys to play with, Junior and Yeah, they and were Bernie. great, yeah. We made 25 bucks a night each. We yeah, thought we were having like, a ball. We had a good time. Day. Yeah, we were Did having a ball. Did you have free ball. beer and stuff? Yes. No, we'd steal yeah, it. we had yes, free beer. You free beer. <laughs> free beer. <laughs> you didn't get free beer. <laughs> you had your own deal going, I guess. I had to bring my own crack in. Where, where were the other places to play? Where were the clubs in some of them? In the, in the, I know there was Jumbo. And, I mean, oh, the that? Jumbo. I played at the Jumbo. I opened, one of my bands opened for um, Peter Tork and the New Monks. And then we opened for the grassroots Peter up there. The, he was the mouse. So it was his it was monkey, monkey spin-off thing? Yeah, oh. the new monks. You opened for him? Yeah, twice. Nice. Well, him, him once and then the grassroots twice. Pat, where were you playing? Uh, where, did, where did et cetera else? Where else did they play? Well, the first gig at uh, Summerville High School was... Mm. Uh, That's huge. I got it by accident. I was 
hit my girlfriend in the in the butt with my ruler, and I got bagged and was sent to the building master. Carol? Uh, Mary. But I got oh, Mary! <laughs> the one you went to Woodstock with, right? Yes. Pat so, went to Woodstock. So, anyway, I got sent to the building master, and I kind of oh. deal with him. We'll play at the high school dance. That is like I don't have to stay after school for three weeks. That's a, that's a movie. <laughs> for that's movie material. You got three weeks. That's and then you went there going out with actually, right? Three days. She, she was your girlfriend hey, for a while. I hit her in the butt with a ruler. It was the 60s. That sounds like a song. I hit her in the butt with rulers. <laughs> now I'm a rock and roll star. I love to have. <laughs> we, we played, uh, my bands, um, we played at, oh, you know, the back room of the... Um, Coronet. The Coronet, well, we played at Red Which Bones. Red Bones. Yeah, but we played, but even before that, Rosebud had a back room called the Sorry Room. Yeah, the Sorry Room. The Scuzzy Room. Right. Because it was like. It was it the Sorry Room. Yeah, that's good. That's where the Blowhounds were. <laughs> yeah, all the. <laughs> the and I, I thought that was I a remember, band. I was like, that's a great band. I remember right. working in there with shoes that were this high. There was more wood in my shoes than in my coffee table. <laughs> I, I had the big. You know, we were in there singing. Uh, uh, Don't take away the music. We were right in the middle of the disco scene. And, and that was that was cool. I mean, you know, we were getting paid and everything was getting paid good money, gold chains and stuff. There was places around to play in some of them. On Johnny D's, I played at Johnny D's uh, quite a bit. I got this shirt from Johnny D's. I know. I went cool. to see Kenny Wayne Shepard, and the guy uh, come up and he handed it like thirty. It makes me want to have nice. some Kahlua. Give me some <laughs> yeah. Nice. Just want to have some Kahlua. Did you guys ever play at Johnny D's? Kenny, you? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think I I just, Johnny D's got I cool said later. That. Was it always cool? Was it all? I mean, like it, later, everybody's like, "Oh, but Johnny did." Yeah, was yeah. it? I mean, was it? No, was well, it, like, no. Solid it, gold and stuff. It started getting Sunday real. Nights, yeah. yeah, solid gold. Yeah. yeah, and we used to play. We'd play. There was hardly anybody in there, and then yeah. solid gold would pack the place. Yeah, we were. Like we followed the fabulous we morons. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. fabulous pharaohs. Yes. Then they became solid gold. Yeah. Oh, is that? Um, I went to uh, Johnny D's. Wasn't always cool. It used to be yeah. country. John yes, Lincoln, right? The Sour Mash Boys played there. John Penny. The John Penny Band. It used to be country western, and then it started evolving. And then when, when all the yuppies moved in, you know, like the I want I'm not shaving my armpits, people. Uh, the my lip people. I was the Bonnie. Was yeah. The, then they then Johnny D started getting cool, you know. And then it's charging like forty seven dollars to get yeah, in, so you know. I think the red line did that too. Holiday. Well, I, I'm glad the red light came in because my house shot up. Like our house is oh, worth a Davis fortune. Square kids. Ah, ah. Exactly. You still have property in Davis Square, both of you? Yeah, I live it. Yeah, I'm hanging on by a thread from a divorce and. Uh, <laughs> Everybody, I want my share, I want my share, I want my share. Yeah, good. I'm so I get the big enough. share. Daddy gets the big now share. Nothing you know, you should give them, uh, you know, you should pay <laughs> them off more because the house is worth more now. Get the hell out of here. See, we're talking Try about the good old days here. Let's not get upset, yeah. all right? Don't the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> the 70s when everything was... I got sidetracked. Was... You mentioned my house. <laughs> what did you, who did you guys, uh, I know that you, you have a, a pretty extensive resume. Who are your, like, lo local influences and who, who do you work with and... I mean, what did you, I know you've had a you've had a nice little history of uh, yeah. Well, the 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 band I used to work with, Robo, uh, used to open up for Aerosmith way before they were big hits. Yeah, yeah. We used to travel together. We played like the Menden Ballroom and the uh, uh, any place skating rinks, yeah. any any place they could get a gig because yeah. you know they so they were like building what, up. So seventy two, seventy three. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So then the country fairs, whatever it was, you know, because. I, and then Dream On came out, but it, it was sort of a regional hit, but it, it sort of tanked internationally, you know what I mean? And uh, they were going for a second album, and Columbia wasn't going to give it to them, so Lieber and Krebs stuck them on the road for like three years until they got this giant following, yeah. which they called the Blue Army, because everybody had Blue that Army, do it yeah. denim, remember? Everybody wore the denim yeah, yeah, shirt, yeah. Uh, working class hero look. And they got such a big following, the second album like took off, and that brought the first album right back up there. So when did you join? Tell, tell the people about uh, that. Right uh, during Bootleg. And you were, you were the drum roller, well, the bootleg, right? The Bootleg album? Yeah. yeah bootleg. I toured for the Bootleg album, then started recording with him with Night in the Ruts, all the way up to Permanent Vacation. He's I got was there for the... You, were you actually the like roller coaster. Yeah. Session, or were you, uh, you were just well, I, I had played with him, yes. There was many times I played with him. Nice. You know? That's so cool. Yeah, Aerosmith's like was the thing when I was a little oh, they, kid. They're, they're the they greatest band Year's in the world. Eve, like, but they, they were already popular by that time. Yeah. They're like Boston's the claim to fame, you know, like we're proud of them, you know. Giles made it first before Aerosmith, but Aerosmith took it to another level. Absolutely. Yeah. And, they, and they went through the, you know, the, they had a rocky road along the way. Too. <laughs> I mean, you talk about Night in the Ruts, and like, yeah. I remember laying on the side of the lawn on Lowell Street beside the building they used to practice in. And I think they were practicing Night in the Ruts at that time, or it might have mm -hmm. even been drawn the line, but it was right around that time. We used to lay on beside the tracks. 
I think they could hear them. Could be done with mirrors. I think they were recording at that time. Yeah. 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 Pat, Pat has a, you know, he, he's got his Aerosmith, he, he worked with Jay Giles, so I worked, when I was with, I was at KISS 108 for 13 years with Manny in the Morning, yeah, I remember and I got to, uh, I mean, that some of my best memories, I got to sing with Tony Bennett, really, and I got to sing with Bobby Vinton on the air. Like on the air? Yeah, oh, that's but awesome. actually I had to sing as, with Tony Bennett as one of the characters I made called Blanche, there was a takeoff on his mother. <laughs> exactly. She used to say, tell it when I want him now. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like my friend Al used to, used to do the imitation of Pat's mother, and I used to do it on the phone to Maddie, and then next thing you know, I, I'm like, that's Blanche. like this huge, <laughs> he asked me my name, I never had a name. She goes, what's your name? Anyway, I goes, I just thought this, I, I should have said Ma Madge, because that was his mother's name, Madge. I said Blanche, but anyway, so I had to sing with Tony Bennett as Blanche. <laughs> so what was Tony Bennett doing on Kiss 108? Well, I'll tell you what he did was he, about 1987, he released White Christmas again. So Blanche sang it with him, like he's like, I'm dreaming of a White Christmas, just like the ones I used to, you know. And I don't even have it anymore. I might have it in the cellar. Well, it's gone. Well, so I don't know. It's I got like literally 2,000 cassette tapes called ear checks should in my cellar, out, man. you know? I mean, I don't know if I have it. I'm, I'm not like, hey, look what I got. I'd rather just brag about it. I don't know if you should be bragging. <laughs> I don't get packs of cassettes. But I sang with Tony Bennett. <laughs> Bobby Vinton and Tony Orlando and Richard Simmons was in love with me. He used to that pick me up and carry around, carry me around the building, carry me. He was strong as a horse. Richard ox. Simmons, the, the, yeah. the exercise guy? Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. Oh, Remember the day you <laughs> called me up from Maddie's show? Alice Cooper was there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was awesome. I got, the, I got to interview Alice Cooper uh, for like an hour. That's just some great pictures. It's Blanche. But, but you see, there's a picture of me with him, and I'm like dressed, you know, like a regular guy, but I'm doing, I'm here with Alice Cooper. It was Blanche and Alice Cooper. You know, he was great. Great, great guy. What a, what a Vince. good guy. What's his, but, what's his name? It's Vince. Vince Fournier. Yeah. But, so we got to get back to some of them. That's yeah. when uh, you, well, you, yeah, you we were in Medford. We were, we're in Medford. Medford. We're in Meffa. <laughs> you know, I know some girls from Meffa. I know Steffi Heffer from the Meffa Heffers. I think you know her? Why, you don't? I, th I think it's Medford. That's Medford. People from Medford. It's Meffa, Meffa, Meffa. don't like to be called. It's it's that you called, though, Jimmy. That you called me up that morning, and you, you wanted Alice to hook up with Joe. Do you remember that? Oh, with yeah, Joe that's Perry. right. So you. So so I so called you, up Joe. And I said, I can't wake him up at 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> That's, right. That's a great story. Wait a little while. And Call then him up and say, Alice, together? I got Alice yeah. Cooper here. We, we, Alice we, met, we met at Intermediate. <laughs> <laughs> we all met at Intermediate. Just like being in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, knocked over the, <laughs> you knocked over the straight vodka. Dana's going to be Just stay away from my gin. <laughs> oh, my God. That's water, folks. What a, what a, did Good. you guys ever play at the Club 3? Uh, like, that was, oh, that was Christ, a place yeah. that was coming around. It, it started was, out as Kevin's that Corner. Country. That was Country too, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Time? Kevin's Corner. Then it turned into Club 3. I played in and there. the same people that played Journey D's played there. Yep, the same circuit. John Penny used to book them. John that's Penny was a country. Right. John Lincoln Wright and the Sour Bash Boys. That's right. He had a big, uh, <sighs> big so People watching the show, I'm thinking about some of them. I'll, I'll throw you out some names of bands from the old days of some of them. The Huns. The hmm. Huns, remember Stratty? Yep. And um, Paul Downing? Yep. They were in the Huns. The Huns were the big, big band. They were like, hmm. nobody could touch the Huns. And then there was a group called Indescribably Delicious. Dude. They were really good. John, they were brothers. Um, oh, are they all based in some of them? Yeah, yeah, they were all yeah. some of them kids. And there um, was the Prince and the Poppers, too. Wayne remember Sherwood them? was in it. And uh, Hutchie. Hutch. Hutchie, who now. A Somerville kid who's been playing with Bonnie Raitt for like 20 years. He used to be the bass Jimmy player with me. And he played with you too. Yeah. Remember his sister? Anne? Yes, I do. Very yes, pretty I do. Girl. Very pretty. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe we shouldn't be around <laughs> the sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's remembering more about the girls. I, what, hey. what can I say? I still got some of my looks. So, some of them. You know, come hang on by your should have brought them. The, some uh, of my looks. <laughs> So here everybody, in a while. everybody ever talk about like bands? They always say she used to do it to, to get into it for the girls. Did you, is there any truth to that? Mm. I believe so. <laughs> I don't think I got into it for that. I really, I really wanted to be a uh, successful musician. I want. I really didn't think of the girls. I just, I wanted. I liked the whole thing. You know, I, I was thinking of. I, I, you know, when we had a passion. We wrote songs. We, we were songwriters. You know, we, we've written songs. We've recorded songs and. 
And I don't, I don't know if we, we thought of it, but I hear now like, oh, you were so hot. Oh, I loved you. I was in love with you. I'm like, I don't know, where was I then? I guess, I don't know. Where were you then? You were too focused on the music. I don't know. Or the, or the, the booze. I don't know. What the hell? It I was had a girlfriend, time. so I, did, I didn't look at the girls. I had yeah, a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had yeah. a girlfriend the whole time you were in a band? Yeah. 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 Who were you? We all, we all, <laughs> actually, we all did. No, we all really had a girlfriend. It kept your level. It kept your level. Well, it was he a yeah. son of a girl, the girl that you had yes. around for the longest time? But when we used to play... No. I'll tell you what, when, like, we, never got married. when we used to play Summer High School, there was my brother Dennis on stage right Rest and Dennis peace. Mack on stage left. Oh, Dennis Mack. And they Mack. attracted the girls. Yeah. If you looked, at, if you saw some old pictures, you'd see a bunch of girls in front of my brother and a bunch oh, of girls. You, uh, the two Dennis's. Were you a singer? No, I played your, drums. Yeah, but you sang in, in sang. our band. Yeah, he yeah. sang in our band. I'm going to send a picture of Patrick and I at the Embassy Lounge. I'll have, it's on Facebook. I'll send it to you and you can flash it up there somewhere. I to talk about the I have some pictures in there from we Robo. We'll get a bunch, bunch of that good stuff. We'll get a good, yeah. And I like to mention my sons now are, uh, are in a band. They're in a What's band called name? Mall Cops. They just came off of a 10-state tour. They're, my yeah. sons are 18 and 20, and uh, they do all original music, and they just did one of these do-it-yourself tours. They, went, they were in Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Virginia, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey. Yeah, second generation. And, uh, yeah, second That's generation. True. My son, my son Jimmy, my eight, eighteen-year-old is the drummer, and um, and my son Joey writes the songs. He's a bass player, keyboard player, and he's the lead singer. Did they nice. want to play music when they were little, like you did, or did you uh, shove it down their throat? Uh, uh no. <laughs> All I did was look. At, I took my sons. I took my sons to see Alice Cooper when they were like six and eight. I took them to every concert I could possibly take them to. All and I took them to Broadway shows. I took them to everything. We listened to Beethoven, Beatles. Bowie and Billy, Billy oh, Joel. Yeah. I gave them everything. The piano was always there. Next thing you know, they were up. my kid Jimmy is playing the piano when he was like five years old. He could hardly sit there. He was playing and he plays better than me. And they, they all play, they both played the piano. Who were you the first time you picked up a drumstick? Uh, I think I was 14. 14? That's a yeah. late bloomer. Isn't that a little, a little late for But I turned pro professional at 15. What is, what is classified <laughs> as a summable <laughs> professional musician? Oh what, what, is, uh, what do you have to you do? You get paid. <laughs> Even if it's only ten bucks, you get but, you, is that is that St. But, Clement's gig or some old high gig? Uh, both of them, both of them. Nice. Oh boy! But, but I had to go. We opened up for Delaney and Barney. I don't know if you know. Uh, let it rain. Yeah. Let it rain. Great band. And with, um, so we had to join the union. So at 19, I really went professional. Yeah. Because you know, awesome. we were awesome. Dudes, yeah. Well, yeah, you had to play. Yeah, have you ever played looked the dudes. back? Have you ever had a real job? Oh yeah, plenty you of got one now, right? <laughs> He's a CPA. I used to work with my father. My, oh, my father cut really down right. trees. That's right. He put you us to work as soon as we could get working papers. Fourteen, you're going to work, pal. <laughs> you, you see, he used to drive the biggest tr truck you ever saw. He used to cut trees down. I could hardly little, look over the dip. little old boy, little Pat, <laughs> driving this. Because they'd come up the street before it was a before it was a one before it was. Oh, one way. You could always tell, up oh, the old boy's home, the trucks, and then they pull the trucks in the driveway. But, but you got to tell them, oh, did I ever have a real job? Yeah, b briefly. I mean, I've worked at radio stations for 23 years. I got 23 years and a nice pension out of the radio stations. And then I'm working this job. I'm almost there. I'm there almost eight years with the city, and I hope and I'll get a pension from them. Somerville, yeah. Yeah, the city of Somerville. And, um, but, Pat, you got to tell them about the, the Beatles, the Beatle suit. Your father bought you the Beatles suit. Yeah, we found it. In the Beatles boots. <laughs> yeah, his father, his kid had everything cool. Him and his brother, his father bought them. They always had the coolest stuff, and I was like, "That's a Beatles suit." Let's let's, let's elaborate. It, on it was this. like that uh, that original Beatles suit that they had with the little piping that oh, you know. Yeah. And the, the they were so mad. Yeah. Mickey Finns. Mickey Finns used to be Mickey in Davis Finn. Square. The whole outfit, including the Beetle boots, was forty bucks. Oh, from Mickey <laughs> Original Beetle boots. Where was Mickey? I Fence? should have brought my suede. The boots were boots. from Highland Shoe. Oh, Highland Shoe. They were I called Gauchos. Everything, everything in Davis Square. Square. Everything in Davis Square. And you could get a wig across the street at the five and ten. That's right. Woolworth sold the Beetle Rose. wigs. Mr. Mr. Rose. Oh, she was awesome. So <laughs> Beetle wigs. That's yes. Awesome. I wrote a story about Mr. Rose. I wrote for seven years in the uh, Some Old Times. I wrote an little article called uh, Life in the Ville. He'd follow us around the store all the time. I should send you a picture of my license plate. My license plate says Ville. No, I can't. But I'm, I'm thinking of selling my house, and I want to I want to live on Revere Beach. I want to live on the oh, beach. Oh, is that fancy? No, I just want to live on the beach. On I want to. I love the beach. I want to walk on the beach barefoot. I used to. I lived across from the beach. I lived on the beach in Florida actually for a year when I was in a band called the Hypnotics in 1986. And uh, I just fell in love with the beach and Revere Beach. I used to work there in the Dodgem guys. 
when I was like 12. The music back? Yeah, we used to work. That awesome. must have been a ball. It was awesome. Charlie Vino worked there, Norman Dole, Mikey, but Mike Banano. Oh, so you know your buddies there. too? Yeah. And the, the guy used to have us crawl up on the mesh, on the electric mesh. We're like, oh my God, that's so long. Having <laughs> kids crawl up on a, on a live electric <laughs> mesh. You gotta fix the mesh, fix the mesh. No, no rewrites, no rewrites. Imagine that being that old that, that I worked at Revere Beach on the amusements. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I didn't think they were ever open in my life. Amazed I'm still alive. I should thank God every time I wake up, huh? All the stuff we've been through. What do you do it's now in music, by the way? I'm, I'm still playing. I'm mostly uh, writing and playing guitar, actually. Who do you play guitar? Are you are doing like session stuff? No, 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 some personal stuff. You did some writing for you, uh, a studio. What do you in my home. Do you have a studio in your house? Small studio. So it's a regular setup. Like Jimmy's got a, probably a better studio than I do. You got a studio in I, your think house I have too? a studio in the house, yeah. And Davis Square, you got a nice studio in the house? Yeah, I did, you don't I need much with this digital studio. stuff. It's a, it's two a, studios in Davis Square. So lap, with these on the, no, two, two studios <laughs> on the same street. Hall Ave. But oh, what? Digital That's stuff just, changed everything. It's nothing. It's a little piece. It's a tape recorder. It's a cassette. What number Hall Ave is it? shut up. I said Hall Street. Right, ball, so ball, go ball, 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 the Moonlight is my group. Yeah, so my mom moon. was telling me, it's like, do you know Jimmy? And I was like, Jimmy who? She said, he he's, uh, plays the piano for our chorus group. And I was like, Jimmy Del Ponte? So it's so funny how generational it's come. Yeah, my mom, yeah. your kids are playing it's music out of Somerville. Else. My mom's singing in Somerville. That is you. so good. Yeah, it's multi-generational. It's Somerville's great. Too bad I'm going to have to move. Why, because of the beach? Because the beach, you got to house for Don't say the beach. <laughs> It's not nice. Oh, the beach. Are you going to sell your house oh, for a million dollars oh, the, and, and the cry beach. about it? I thought you would. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. When I put $750,000 in my pocket, no. See, I knew that way he was going to I'm going to retire in a few years. I want to retire. I got two, I'll have two pensions and what's left of Social Security because, you know, you can't double dip. You can't have your pensions and eat it too, I guess. You can't. <laughs> really? No, you can't. You can't. I, my Social Security, if, at 70, I mean, it's like $2,800 a month. But with two pensions, it offsets, you know? Like, so all the money that I earned, I don't so get to keep. So having parties at your house? Down on the beach. I'm going to rent. I don't want to own anything else now. I don't want to. I don't you want anybody else Somerville? fighting over my stuff. You know, I almost moved during that 110 inches of <laughs> snow a couple of years ago. But last winter was nice. And now <laughs> I'm staying now? another year. Why? This is the only reason, because they're going to plow the snow onto the other side of the friggin' street. Oh, Since 1954, been I've been yeah. shoveling that other side. And I'm going to watch these bastards <laughs> shovel. <laughs> I live on the other side. Oh, God. Hey, this, uh, this was fun. I think we're running out this of time here. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Scotty, nice to meet you, man. We'll be back tomorrow. Was, uh, we'll do it again. We fun. got nothing to do. But, uh, <laughs> welcome, uh, come back, watch us again in Nana's Kitchen. We're, uh, we're uh, going to tape some uh, future episodes, but I couldn't have found a better cast of guys tonight. Thanks. Sounds Thanks, of Scotty. Sunville. Sunville, good old days. A lot of fun. Come back and see us.